Welcome to this demo on Microsoft Teams for School Governors in the UK. My name is Jennifer King, and I'm the UK Schools Engagement Lead for Microsoft here in the UK. I encourage you to follow me on Twitter at, at @jenking double underscore, or get in touch via LinkedIn. I'd love to help you and support your schools during this unprecedented time of remote learning. So don't be afraid to reach out. During this webinar, I'm going to be showing you how you can use Teams as a governing body at a school. Before we dive into the finer points of setting up a meeting, I wanted to go over the basics of using Teams as governors. The first point is that all governors should have an Office 365 account provisioned on the school's tenancy. It's best to not have guest emails accessing the school's tenancy. This way we can ensure that all confidential information is kept confidential and all of the government, governing work happens in a safe and secure space. You can log into your school's tenancy via office.com or you can download the team, Teams app and log in that way. Teams is available on all operating systems and you can access it from a mobile phone, a tablet, a laptop, or a desktop computer. Ensure all members are familiar with the technology and requirements to enable full participation in meetings. Access our resources at microsoft.com slash office slash teams to learn more about Teams. Before your first meeting, agree meeting etiquette and expectations. Ensure that you've changed your agenda to reflect remote meeting practices. And help everyone have an inclusive, accessible meeting. There's so much help to help governing bodies ramp up for remote meetings with Teams. If you go to support.office.com slash Teams, you'll find a whole host of webinars and articles and demos that can help you learn how to really get the most out of Teams. From an education point of view, as you'll be using an education tenancy, you may be interested in watching the Teams Edu webinars, or perhaps taking the Teams Beginner course. If your school doesn't have Office 365 and you'd like to have access to Teams, then please consider the free Fast Track service by emailing ftcrfa at microsoft.com. You can access your tenancy by going to office.com and signing in with your school's tenancy. When you have access to your school's tenancy, you'll find that you have all of our favorite Microsoft products through Office 365. Today, we're going to be focusing on Teams. So we're going to click on Teams. And this is all working through the browser. So when you open up Teams, you'll be able to see that we have the Pine View School Governors Teams. And if I click on Teams, you'll see that there are other teams within that school, but we would like the Pine View School Governors. Over on the left-hand side of the screen, you'll see Activity, Chat, Teams, Assignments, Calendar, Calls, and Files. In Activity, you will have a red notification dot when someone tags you or someone is mentioned within your Teams that you're in, you are a participant in. Chat allows you to talk with other members within the tenancy. So you can speak with other governors or the head teacher, perhaps staff, um, to be able to work on special projects. Teams is where you'll be able to find where you're going to work with your governors. Assignments, don't need to worry about, that's just for the students. Calendar, this is where you'll be able to access all of your meetings and the calendar for the school. Calls, 
This is where you'll be able to make a uh, phone call uh, through VoIP out into the community. You can also call other governors. And in files, you have quick access to your most recent documents that you have been working on. So if we go back to the teams, we can see down a little bit further over from the left, you have channels. We have a general channel, which is always the first channel that's a new team. And then you have other channels that you can make. Here we have finance, health and safety, perhaps an offset inspection and resourcing. It's really easy to create new channels by clicking on the three dots, add channel, and you can create a channel of your choice. You can allow it to be accessible to everyone in the team, or you can choose for it to be private. Perhaps you only want the chair and the clerk to have a channel just for them to have conversations. Click next. And now this chant, you can add who you would like to it. So I will choose Elwood and I will add him. Then I am done. And you can know that it's a private channel because it has this lock next to it. These are the channels that are within our team. And now if we look up at the top within the general channel, we have posts, files, staff notebook, and further tabs where you may see it says one more and this plus sign. I'll get to those in a minute. The posts is where you're able to um, post announcements, where you're able to have conversation, where you are able to link to interesting articles and resources and documents. We have um, the ability to write as if it uh, is an email, so you can add a subject line. And then you can write as if you were writing an email. You can use all the formatting options up at the top, including bullets, you can add links. You also can post it in multiple channels. So you have something that you would like to go to both the health and safety and the resourcing channel. You can have that posted in there by clicking on multiple, multiple channels, select channels, and then choosing from the school governor's team channels. You then choose the little paper airplane down at the bottom and you can send it off or you can add perhaps a gif that you find amusing or you can even give some praise to someone within the team who you feel has been doing a great job. In files, this is where you'll want to keep most of your work. This is where you can keep your meeting minutes, you can keep your agendas, head teacher reports, etc. It's really easy to create documents from within team by clicking on new, you click on the plus, you choose the document that you would like to create. For example, you can create a word document to create the meeting minutes. We'll say it's the full governing body meeting minutes for the 20th of January 2020. I create that and then it will allow me to create that document. So we'll try that again by clicking on Word document, full governing body agenda for the 20th of February, 2020, create. And then it allows you to create the Word document and you're able to work on this document right here within your browser within Teams. You're able to collaborate on this with anyone else who has access to this document 
everyone in the team will have access to the document because it sits in the files that everyone has access to. So I'll click on close. You can also upload files that come from your computer. You can copy links uh, to the file in order to post it into the posts or in order to put it into a document perhaps. You can download the documents. Next, you have your notebook. This one happens to be called a staff notebook because it's a little bit different than a class notebook. A staff notebook, which we've re, um, repurposed to call Pineview School Governor's Notebook, has, has a notebook for each member on the board. Each member, because I created the notebook, I am the owner of it, and so I'm able to see each of the governor's sections, but the other governors would not be able to see each other's sections. The only space they would be able to see would be the meeting minutes, the collaboration space, and the content library. And then they would be able to see their own. So they their own. So they would be able to do their committee work, for example, within this space, or they could move into the collaboration space and do committee work there with um, the other governors. Up at the top, you'll also see this little plus sign. This plus sign allows you to add tabs. This is where we can integrate some of our favorite apps into Teams. Some of these you may already use. One of my most favorite is using Forms. Forms is excellent, um, an excellent way to, uh, to receive surveys as an example. And here's an example of creating a parent school survey. Every member of the board can work on this together before they send it out, and they would be able to see all of the responses that come in from the survey. And then they can talk about that in their next board meeting. Now that you know how to use Teams, the next part we can cover is how to host a meeting. Let's first look at how to set up a meeting. If we go to Calendar, we can click on New Meeting. Within the meeting, you can create the title. In this case, let's set up a Finance Committee meeting. You can add your required attendees, or you can just make sure it goes to the correct channel and all of the members of that channel will be added. So if we click on add channel, navigate to Pinewood School Governors, and then choose finance. Here in the calendar, we can choose the date that we want. We can choose the time And we can also choose for it to repeat. So we probably are going to have the committee meeting monthly. You don't necessarily need to add a location, particularly right now, as it will automatically have the location as Teams. But if you were going to have a location, you could also add an address there. 
In this space, you could update with the agenda before every meeting, or you can put the general agenda and give overview of what you're doing, or give instructions of where they can find the agenda and the meeting minutes. And then once you are finished filling out your new meeting details, you can click send. When you click send, it will send an email to all of the people within the Pineview School Governor's Finance channel. You can also use the scheduling assistant to look at all of the different um, availability of the other governors who are in that channel. So I'll click on send. And then you'll be able to see that this meeting is populating within the calendar. And if you were to go forward to the next month, you would be able to see that finance committee once again. So how do you now go about joining a meeting now that you've created it? So I'm gonna go back to my calendar in today and you will see that you have this um, FGB monthly meeting. If I click on that, I can then click on join. So I will click on join. And this is where you are able to decide whether you would like to have your camera on or off. And you can also decide if you would like your microphone to be on or off. It's good etiquette to join a meeting without your microphone on, just to make sure that everyone in the meeting does not have an echo that occurs. Um, and you can come off mute whenever you like. You also can choose the devices that you're using. If you have other peripherals plugged into your computer, such as headphones or microphones or a webcam, these device settings allow you to choose which of those things you would like to use. And then when you are ready, you go ahead and click join now. It will connect you to the meeting. This is happening within the browser, although you do have the option of joining through the Windows, um, through the Teams app and you can download that down here at the bottom left. I'll show you what the difference and what it looks like um, shortly. So this is our menu bar of options within a call. You have the timer for how long the call is going to help you keep time to the meeting. You have the camera that you're able to turn on and off. And then you have your unmute button where you can unmute yourself when you need to speak and then mute yourself again when you're no longer speaking. The square with the little arrow next to it is your ability to screen share. So I'm just going to click on that now. If you click on desktop in window, it's going to give you options of what you can share. You can share your entire screen or if you have another display connected, you can share that display screen. Or you may choose to share just an application, like a Word document or a PowerPoint. Or you may choose to share another Microsoft Edge tab. This is useful to be able to show the team that you are working in. As an example, I will click here and I will share my screen, and it has taken me to my Office 365 homepage. So I'm going to click Teams again, and it's going to take me to the Microsoft Teams. <clears throat> and this means I can find and navigate my way to the files and open up the agenda for the April meeting. 
and then everyone on the call will be able to see the agenda. And if my camera's on, they'll also be able to see me down, at the, um, down in the corner. If I return back to the meeting, um, speaking of cameras, <laughs> we can talk about that a little bit. If I go to more actions, you'll be able to see that you can turn off incoming video. If you are struggling with bandwidth, it's a good idea to turn off the incoming video. Even though it's great to have your video on to have that connection with your other um, governors, it does take some bandwidth. And so if you are struggling with audio, then try turning off your video first. Also in this menu of the three little dots, you are able to start recording. This is very useful in order to record the meeting to then take the minutes afterwards for the clerk. You can show the meeting details where you may have put the agenda into the meeting. And you are also able to have the meeting notes, show meeting notes, and those will also come up. This is a space where you're able to collaborate with your other um, governors who are in the meeting. This speech bubble <coughs> is where you're able to have a conversation with your other team members while you are in the converse, um, while you're in the meeting. So it's not necessarily back chat, but it is a great way where you are a back channel chat, but it is a way for you to share uh, links as an example, resources, share documents, um, and you can also share emojis and GIFs uh, while you're doing that and it helps um, keep the conversation going. Some people can be quite shy about coming off mute and it allows people who don't feel comfortable in speaking to still continue to have a voice. It's important to think about having those inclusive meetings. Having remote meetings isn't necessarily comfortable for everyone. So you want to offer as many different ways to communicate as possible. So when you're ready to, um, uh, oh, also how to show the participants to see who is in the call, you'll be able to see who's currently in the meeting as well as those who were invited. This, that way you're able to see who is attending the meeting. When your meeting is over, you just need to hang up by clicking on the red phone button. If you do have the Teams app downloaded, you'll be able to join the call through that Teams app. And I'll show you how you are able to do that. So if you go to your Microsoft Office home and you log into your Outlook, in here you will have your calendar. So if I click on the calendar, It then shows me that we have the FGB monthly meeting. So I will click on that part of, um, on that appointment and it will say join Teams meeting. So I'm going to click on join Teams meeting and it's going to ask me if I would like to download the Windows app, if I would like to join on the web instead, or it will automatically take you to the um, Office Teams um, app if you have it downloaded, where you all you have to click is open. And then it will bring you within the Office Teams app and you'll be able to click join now. There isn't necessarily a big difference between joining via the browser and joining via the app. There are a few functionality differences that you may find um, better when, when using the client app, but you do get a great experience going through the browser as well. So as I'm joining, I'm going to click join now, thinking about my camera, whether it's on or off, and whether or not my microphone is on or off, and which devices I'm going to be connecting with. I will then click join now. I also have an option here 
This is for a blurred background. In order for if you wanted to have your camera on, but you didn't necessarily want to have people being able to see what is behind you, then you would be able to click on the blurred background. So I'm going to turn my camera on and I'm going to turn the blurred background on as well. And now you're able to see that I have a blurred background. So I will click on um, join now. I also have an option to choose some other fun backgrounds as well. And so now you have your camera on and you have your background blurred, but you are able to choose other backgrounds if you are interested by showing show background effects. And there's quite a few fun ones, whether you want to be perhaps on the beach or perhaps you would like to be um, in a Minecraft world or in a very swanky office. Um, you can have lots of fun with background images, including uploading your own. Um, but we won't get too distracted by that <laughs> at this moment. Um, but you'll be able to see that we do have a raise your hand feature. So if someone in the meeting, thinking about that inclusion, if someone in the meeting does have a point that they would like um, to be raised and they don't want to um, have to interrupt the speaker, they can go ahead and click on that raise your hand button. You can also have the meeting chat going on. You can show the participants. You're able to turn your camera on and off as well as your mute. And you're able to start the recording and turn off your incoming video. Also thinking about inclusion, you might wanna try turning on live captions where everything you say is able to be translated um, into captioning while you're in the call. And when you're finished with your call, all you have to do is hang up. Thank you so much for joining my little demo on how to use Teams for governors. Hopefully it's been helpful for you. Don't hesitate to get in touch. Microsoft is here to support you. Thank you again. Bye.